Hello my friends, today I want to share my goal setting technique with you. This technique is a merge of 20 techniques I've tried so far in my life, but the person I want to thank for this technique most is my friend Neva Rajković, the founder of Manifesting Serbia. It's a program for self-development, it is an amazing program, I went through it almost 8 years ago, I think, yeah, or 7 years ago. Yeah, 2013, seven years ago, and it really changed my life. This is definitely the best self-development I've found in Serbian language, so highly recommend it. If you haven't checked her out so far and you speak Serbian, do that immediately. So uh, let's start. Take a blank piece of paper, take more if you need more, and uh, spread the piece of paper, just draw a line in the middle, you know, and on the left side, Write down all the things that you are now doing or that you can be doing and you enjoying them. Like, let's say you have a job, you write what your job is, for example, copywriter. And then you you also write there something that you enjoy doing. doesn't have to be profitable. It doesn't have to be your business. It's just something that you can do now or you're doing now that is, profit, that is uh, fun for you. So drawing or like if you're a copywriter and you like drawing and you like making muffins and you like helping your people and your friends write their resumes or motivational letters, write it all down on the left side of the paper. On the right side of the same paper, write down all the things you need to finish by some deadline. So like if you are writing a book, if you want to have a business, a blog, if you want to have a book for kids, whatever it is you want. If you want to have a journal, if you want to make, uh, sell your muffins, whatever you want. So on the right side, write down all the things that needs to be done in your life. And they are now waiting because of your lack of doing them or because you outsourced and you're waiting for someone else to tell you when it's done or whatever the reason may be. So I'll give you my example. On the left side, all the things I'm doing now, a majority of my time is consulting and coaching on Zoom. I have one-on-one clients. Uh, the other thing is selling my journals, online course, ebooks, etc. And a lot of my time goes into creating free content for you guys on social media, newsletter, podcast, YouTube, etc. So these are the things I love doing. And also the thing that I love doing is gym and bodybuilding and yoga that I I don't do as much right now. I mean, I do it at home, but not as much as if it wasn't quarantine and if I could go out and also walking. I love walking. So on the right, things that need to be done. In my case, it's my online course in English. It is a hard copy book that I want to write. It is a hard copy book for kids that I want to write. And it is a hard copy journal that I want to make in the future. Some of these things are like my long-term goals and some of them are short-term, but I'm still not there yet. Like I'm not, don't have a finished product. So I'm just giving my examples. It's easier for me to learn when somebody gives me their examples. Now that you have all of those things on the right, so all of those things that you want done in your life, whether it is having six pack, whether it's losing weight, gaining weight, changing your hair color, whatever it may be, Find and circle 10 of the most important ones. So let's say you circle uh, start a blog and you circle lose weight and you circle have a better relationship with my family and all of those things, circle them. After you've done that, you can pause this, obviously, like (laughs) you should pause this and do as I talk. Once you've circled that, see what of those things are completely up to you and for some of them maybe you need help so write down whether you can do it by yourself or you need somebody else's help and whose help do you need write it down so let's say you want to start a blog and you need a designer or you need a developer or you need somebody to make your logo visual identity whatever it is Also write down on the right next to the ones you've circled whether you maybe lack some knowledge or some skill. 
write that down as well. I think talent is really overrated. I'm not talented for most of the things, but the thing is important that what I'm interested in, I learn more about it daily. So I just acquire more and more knowledge and practice by being unperfect. And that's how I improve. So write down if you lack a knowledge or skill in some of those things that you want to accomplish, whether it's writing a book, starting a blog, write down what you don't know and whom you can ask. The major difference here in this phase is realizing the difference between being interested in something and just daydreaming and being committed and getting shit done by actually writing down what we want, wh- what do we need to accomplish that, what is the map of the journey and who do we need to call to help us out with the things that we don't know. Okay, what is the next step? The next step is to prioritize those 10 that you circled. So is it more important for you at this moment to lose weight and be healthier or is it more important for you to start a blog and make money? This is something that is a major call to action into our brain because it makes us realize the difference between that what we are just daydreaming about and what we are very, very committed to doing in creating results in our life. Because when you have a clear intention and you make a decision and do what is necessary, you will be unstoppable. Literally nothing can stop you. It doesn't matter if you're talented. It doesn't matter how much you know. The only thing that matters is that you are willing to do everything necessary to get from point A to point B, how longer it takes, and no matter how many people you ask to help you along the journey. So if you do what is necessary to get from A to B, you will get from A to B. That is very important to understand because when people say, I will just do all that I can. Well, you won't get anywhere like that because I can't do all that I can. I don't know a lot of things. So if I did all that I could, I could never have my own amazing website or beautifully designed ebook because I suck at design. So don't do what you can do. Do what needs to be done and find help with all of the things that you are like me, that you suck in, that you can't do, or that you could, but it would take so much time and you're just not interested in them. So the next step that I do is identify women or men from my surrounding that inspire me, that have realized what I want. So if somebody wrote a book, I'm going to ask them, hey, can you help me out? What is the roadmap? Who should I call? Should I self-publish or what should I do? You know, and if you don't have the women or men in your surroundings that are doing what you want to do, doesn't really matter because you can find them online on TED Talks, on YouTube, on Instagram, on blogs, etc. And you then can write them a letter or an email and just ask politely with a concise and direct message ask for tips or suggestion or advice. But before you do that, try to realize by reading all of their work, maybe they've said it already, probably by realizing what are they doing differently than you, you will also get to make a conclusion why they are where they are today. So you can listen to their podcasts, blogs, read them, read their books and listen to their YouTube videos. And it doesn't take so much time to figure out what they're doing differently than you and where you can improve. The most important part when you do that is to realize how do they think and act differently than you. And what you will probably realize about a majority of them is that they are minding their own business. They are not giving a crap of who likes or dislikes them. They are not asking for advice from their mother, father, sister, brother and friends. They are asking for advice. They are hanging out with people who are better than them in what they want to achieve. I'm not saying you're not hanging out with your family. I'm saying you don't ask your family and friends from, for business advice because they will give you fear-based advice which is not relevant or applicable. Don't ask anyone for advice that haven't done what you want to do in your life. So realize that these women that you are now impressed by or that you now want to see what they are doing differently that will inspire you to act, they are probably much, much, much further than you, which is fine because you should be learning from those that are 10 years 
there from you. But another thing to keep in mind is it's amazing if you can find also a role model or an example that is one year in front of you because her tips and lessons that she can give you will be more applicable to you. And I'm saying this from personal experience because 10 years ago when I was starting my business, I wanted to work with people who are like one year behind me. And now I don't work with beginners because I get very bored. That is the difference. You should find somebody to mentor you who is maximum three years before you. I think that's very useful advice. Okay, now that you have your 10 wishes and you realized and you read written down like here I can do this by myself I need help with this I need this knowledge I need to learn this to realize this now it's time to see what or which ones of those stands and what desires that you've written down are actually now resonant with your life's purpose at this moment why is this important because no matter what you desire to do first, there will be a lot of roadblocks, a lot of fear, stress, and it's much easier to go through that when you have a clear why. And there is a lot about clear why in the books such as Simon Sinek, Find Your Why, Shakti Gawain, Living in the Light, and Viktor Frankl, Why uh, the Man's Search for Meaning. But I think that you need to sit down and meditate on that. What is your why and what, which of those goals now are in line with your current life purpose? Because it's different if, you're, if you have a family, if you're a working mom, if you're a single mom, or if you don't have kids. It's much different. I, another thing and another advice I want to share with you is that don't obsess over which one of those 10 will you realize first. Try to manifest first, to create first, to make actions, to, to realize it first, because it doesn't matter that much. Your first goal is just a catal- catalyzer of change, basically, because when you go and act and manifest that first goal, you will acquire courage by showing up. Your self-confidence will grow because you just gave yourself a promise and you went for it. You did not bail on yourself. And that is how you build the muscle of self-confidence. And once you start doing, you will have so much more momentum and energy to check all the other goals and it will be so much easier. You will be faster and you will be more intuitive and you will be more knowledgeable and you will be more passionate. So just focus on choosing and making a decision. Majority of people are procrastinating by imagining the overwhelm. The overwhelm does not come from having 100 things to do, but from not managing our mind. And this is the living proof of why somebody like Bill Gates, who has 24 hours in a day, does so much and then somebody else complains. Or this also explains why somebody like Rachel Hollis with five kids can make shit happen and somebody who has one child and like full help at home does nothing. So don't make excuses, make plans and write down what 10 goals you want to create this year and write down what you can do now, what you need help with and who can help you out. Another very important thing is to Choose the first goal that you're going to commit to, to write down the clear success metrics. What does it mean to you? If it's losing weight, don't say lose weight. Say, I want to have that many, or this much, I don't know, body fat or this uh, kilograms or whatever measurement you are using for that. So the major difference between the list that you wrote down on your paper and the list where you get to choose 10 results you want to create in your life and make at least 5 to 10 actions you need to do for each one is the difference between list of potential possibilities of daydreaming, etc. And another list where we have a plan, a set intention, a clear intention. And we made a decision to make it happen no matter what. So... Without clear metrics of success, without clear action plan, without clear steps you need to take, you will procrastinate, you will lie to yourself that you're overwhelmed, that you don't know what to do. Well, of course you don't know. That's why you ask. The most important thing for a goal to become a reality is to set up a clear intention to have 
momentum to start acting today, to have clear focus and to just get work done because you can't think your way into success. You have to act your way into success. And if you don't commit to yourself today and start realizing the goals, you will be very upset in a month or in a year because you will wish you've started it today. So go ahead now, write down those 10. And if you need some questions or if you want to ask me questions, you're not clear about something, reach out via email, jovana.miljanovic at gmail.com. Ask me anything and I will be willing to help you out. I've been doing this since, as I said, 2013, when I've been through the manifesting course by Neva and that course changed my life. I've manifested so much amazing things into my life, but not by law of attraction, by law of action, work, failure. And it is my belief that the women that are most successful have been through so much more shit that you can uh, not even imagine at this point. So they've had more failure and more loss than you, but they came to the other side because they have grit and they have grace and they're resilient. And you don't get to learn that by reading books or self-help or going to seminars. You do that by action, baby. So get down to work and let's talk tomorrow.